It was a bit more than a week ago when Harris County was told it would receive no money from the state of Texas for flood mitigation projects. That's after the county requested $1.3 billion. Pushback was immediate from both sides of the political spectrum about how much of a snub that was and how that could have happened. Congressman Al Green was one of the many politicians who stepped to the front asking for Texas Land Commissioner George P. Bush to explain that snub. Representing the 9th Congressional District, Congressman Green joins me this morning. Good to see you in person. It's a good thing. It is. We haven't done this in a while. It is. I've been Zooming quite a bit lately, <laughs> so it's an honor to be with you in Glad the flesh. Glad you Zoomed into here to be a part of it. So what was your response when you heard that there was no money available? I know you were very, very uh, obvious in your disgust with what was going on. Well, my immediate response was that of shock. Uh, I can conceive of no world, no galaxy, no universe where in Houston would get zero amount of money. It just makes no sense. So what we thought we'd better do is uh, talk to HUD and get some sense of what was going on. I have the actual memo that HUD sent me with reference to this. And in this memo, they indicate that Texas submitted an action plan. But when you get to this point, you have to submit an amendment to your action plan. That's what it says here. And Texas hasn't done that. So the plan that they propose is a proposal. Ah. And until HUD acts on the amendment, no money will be sent. So I hope they'll get something in. You know, and, and it, it seems it's, it's almost tragic that it's been four years since Harvey, almost four years since Harvey, and we're still trying to work on getting money as a result of all of that. Yes, that's true. And I have a piece of legislation. It's called the CDBG DR bill, disaster relief. This legislation passed the House in the last Congress. This legislation streamlines this process. This legislation will help get money to the end users, the people, a lot faster. We need to pass it out of my committee and then pass it again in the House and the Senate. We couldn't pass it last time because we had a Republican Senate. But my hope is we'll pass it this time and we'll eliminate some of this elongated process. You made a comment about you had a Republican Senate. Well, you may not have a Republican Senate, but there are a lot of things that aren't getting accomplished. Uh, and one of those things, the House voted to pass the bar to have a bar bipartisan commission to yeah. study what happened on January 6th. You had 35 uh, uh, Republicans who joined you in that, so it made it a bipartisan, a legitimate bipartisan uh, bill as opposed to one of those where you have like two people come through and they call it bipartisan. So if there ever was a time to have a commission like this, a lot of people asking, why not? Yeah, it's modeled after the 9-11 commission, bipartisan, co-chairs, uh, the chair would be a Democrat, vice chair, Republican. Uh, that's my belief. Uh, but no sitting congressperson would be on there. No sitting mm -hmm. senator would be on there. Or anyone holding public trust of any kind would be on that commission. It would have subpoena power. We could get to the bottom of this. We have to get to the bottom, and this is the way to do it. But you didn't get, uh, obviously, you passed it out of the House. The Senate did not have enough senators to vote to even move it to a point where it could be considered. Do you think that that is still a possibility? I know that the president has said that it's still on the table to get it done. Well, it's a possibility, but I'm not going to bank on that, to be quite honest. Uh, I think that at some point in the Senate, we have to realize that allowing minority rule is probably not the best way to do business for the things that we really have to do. Give you an example of what I'm saying to you. When the Republicans had control of the Senate, they did not waste any time breaching protocols so that they could get as many judges as they could on the bench. Even Supreme Court justices with 51 votes, 51 votes, not this notion of 60 to then vote to get 51. So what I, I would call to people's attention is this. We can wait until they get in power and decide that the 60 vote rule no longer applies, or we can decide that it no longer applies. Uh, I am for eliminating the filibuster, especially as it relates to civil rights legislation and these things that we have to do. It makes no sense for us to do nothing mm -hmm. because we can't get 60 people to agree so that we can pass something with 51 votes. We got a couple of minutes left, and, one, and we got a few newsmakers extra too because he and I like to talk, so we'll <laughs> do that. But uh, SB7 in the state of Texas did not passed through because Democrats walked out. And it was talking about the voter integrity bill, which is what the governor and other folks call it. Your thoughts about the attempts to put that kind of bill into law about the voting in the state of Texas? First, let me commend those who walked out. You don't have to participate in your own political demise. You can walk out. If it's going to happen, let it happen without you. The next point, we have to realize where we are. You've got to remember now, 
invidious discrimination has been in Texas for a very long time. Juneteenth exists because Texas would not acknowledge that the slaves were free. It took a general, Gordon Granger, to come to Texas, landed in Galveston, and he brought an army with him to tell those landholders and the persons who had freed slaves that they were free. You got to remember, it was in Texas that Smith versus Allwright, Supreme Court case wherein Texas was holding white primaries right here in Harris County. Lonnie Smith was a dentist in Harris County. And then after the Supreme Court ruled that you can't have white primaries, had to go down to Fort Bend County and tell Fort Bend you can't set up a white pre-primary. So Texas has been discriminating against African Americans for a very long time. And what they did is just a continuation of that discrimination. And it's, it's sad to say this, but that's what it is. And you have to call it as it is or you won't correct so that you can move on to another version of life. We're going to talk more about that on Newsmakers Extra because I want to get into some depth about it. That's history that I hadn't heard before. So I love talking to you about that. You know what's going on here. So Congressman Green, thank you. Thank We're you. going to continue this in Newsmakers Extra, which you can find as well on uh, the click2houston.com on the Newsmakers link there.